Hello everyone, and in this video I'm going to be talking about this gripper project that I've been working on on the past few days. It can operate using a servo motor and a potentiometer, or it could also function using this spring-loaded uh, rack and pinion mechanism. All it uses is some coating, Arduino, some electrical components, and some 3D printed components. In this video I'm going to walk you through how the mechanism actually works, uh, the design process I went through, and a bit of the coating that makes the servo motor and potentiometer function like so. All right, so first off, how does this mechanism actually work? So you'll notice these gears here, and they're the same size, meaning that they have the same module and same number of teeth. And we want that so that the claws can move sort of symmetrically. And the shaft of the gears is connected to the first pair of links. And those first pair of links have the same rotational speed as the gears do. And the second pair of links are sort of in front of the gears right here, and they connect the claws, the first set of links, and the second set of links. Having that sort of set up, we're left with a four bar linkage mechanism. And that's how the claws actually work. So how does the potentiometer connect to that? We have this component right here that will connect to the shaft of one of the gears only. And you can see that there's a slot inside and that slot could fit the arm of the actual servo motor. So yeah, you can see that it fits quite snugly. And now we're gonna take a look at the circuit setup. What I have here is a breadboard the actual servo motor, potentiometer, and an Arduino compatible board, as well as some mail-to-mail -mail cables. So starting off, we're gonna attach the five volt pin to the, into the power rail. And following that, we're gonna attach from the ground pin to the ground rail, like so. Now we're gonna attach the potentiometer in a way that each of its pins has its own node, putting it right in the center here. So now the potentiometer is gonna have to be connected to one of the analog input pins, and that's gonna be in the bottom few right here. And we'll choose A1. And the potentiometer also has to be connected to the power supply and the ground. Now for the servo motor, the middle pin's gonna be attached to the positive power rail, and the brown pin's gonna be attached to the ground rail. And lastly, we're gonna attach the final pin for the servo motor to an analog pin. And we'll choose pin number nine. And now when we plug in the Arduino board into the computer, as well as some coding, we get this. All right, so this right here is the code for the entire system. We start off by including the library of code for servo motors and it's just written like so. Now we're gonna declare an object for the servo motor. And following that, we declare a variable, which is gonna be the angle for the potentiometer and the servo motor. And now in the setup function, all we're gonna do is tell the Arduino board that the servo motor is attached to pin nine. So in the first line of code for the void loop, we're just gonna read the value of pin one, which if you can remember is attached to the potentiometer that value is going to be set to the angle. And now the angle is going to have its value changed through the mapping function. And we're going to turn that value that's read by the potentiometer into something that can be used for the uh, servo motor. And now the last line of code is just telling the servo motor to move into that mapped angle. And so this is the mechanism that we get when we combine everything that we just talked about. Cool and all, but as I said earlier, this doesn't require an Arduino board to function. Because by screwing on this other 3D printed component that I made, it doesn't need any electrical input or coding. Now this mechanism is much simpler than any coding. It just uses a rack and pinion mechanism, with the rack being this new component 
and the pinion being the component that connected to the servo motor. And so when my thumb pushes that rack, it causes that pinion to move clockwise, opening the claws as you may see. And when I let go, the spring pushes that rack back, causing the pinion to move counterclockwise, and thus closing the claws. Much simpler. And that is just one of many personal projects that I have designed and built. If you want to go see more, I have plenty that are similar on my YouTube channel. Otherwise, have a good day and goodbye.